Hi, my name is Terry Lee Bavona, and this is a, a video clip in a series called A Life Worth Living. And this one is uh, video number six, and it's called The Back 40. Uh, this story is a, shows the importance of actually trying to come into a patient's world uh, and identify for them what feels safe. Um, as family members with people with dementia or people who are confused, strokes or whatever, there's kind of always this common tendency as healthcare givers and as family members to keep them oriented or keep them in the now. And there's a lot of times where that's really not necessary and it's actually not helpful because the, the world that the patient is experiencing is where they feel the safest. And the idea in this story is to demonstrate in a very simple, fun fashion um, how important it is to stay in their world if we can do that in a somewhat congruent and a little bit entertaining way um, that they feel safe in that context. So this is, a, I used to work in a head trauma ICU is one of the top four trauma centers in the world and uh, so a lot of head injuries and this fellow was a farmer um, fell off his tractor uh, hit his head uh, really really badly um, and uh, suffered a concussion um, he did not need brain surgery uh, he woke up within a couple days after his head injury but he was still quite disoriented and I'd been talking with one of the more seasoned ICU nurses and we were talking about this very issue about being congruent with the patient rather than trying to make the patient be congruent with us. Does a patient who's in an ICU for a week really need to know that it's Wednesday the 27th at 2 in the morning? No. If he thinks it's a different time and place and he feels safe, then it's actually a more ethical and compassionate thing to do is to go ahead and let them be in that reality. So this one evening, about 3 in the morning, uh, this man was laying in bed and the ICU was pretty quiet then and, uh, and he yelled. And he goes, hey! And I was like trying to figure out after this talk about patient congruence with the or conversational congruence with the patient, what I was going to do. So I walked over to the bed and I said, "What?" <laughs> and he goes, "What do you think you're doing?" And I said, "What do you mean? What do I think I'm doing?" So I was kind of matching his his meter and his tone. He says, "I told you to go plow the back forty. What are you doing?" And I said, "Look." I said, you told me this morning to plow the front 21st, and that's what I'm doing. Then I'll get to the back 40. And he looked down, and he said, oh, okay. And he literally turned his head to the left and went right back to sleep. <laughs> and as silly as that is, that really taught me after that with a demented patients or people with head injuries or people whatever reason narcotics or that they're uh, kind of in their own little magical world that by staying with them and this guy demonstrated this so quickly and it's so powerfully um, by staying in their world he felt safe he felt congruent and there was nothing in that process for him that stood out as anything to be challenging but imagine if I tried to tell him he was in the ICU and that it was the 27th of whatever month and it was 2 in the morning and he fell off his... I mean, the whole scenario would have been totally different, but I just really wanted that man to feel safe. And in that funny little way, he was able to do that just by being congruent, congruent with his worldview at that time. Thank you.